Meanwhile, Ohio State is going, for real, we take one week off. And this is how y'all do us. We take one week off. And what y'all got for us is Texas the number one team in the country. Fool, why? <laughs> like, that's what they would be doing. Or more to the point, again, you got that three type of fan situation with Ohio State, right? Like, fine. You don't think that we're the number one team in the country? That's cool. We want to be the number one team in the country come January 20th. That's what everybody says. That's what everybody says. But we all want our respect. We want our flowers. To which, if we're talking about the eye test, which you see right here, regardless of what you see on a scoreboard, Ohio State has the most talented football team in all the country. All of the country. They are deep. They got it. It's about, is Ohio State going to stop Ohio State? That's the question. They got a non-conference slate that is booty. It, it, I mean, we're talking Akron, Western Michigan, and Marshall. But you know who else had a non-conference slate that was booty? Michigan last year. You know what happened for Michigan? They were number one team in the country by November, and they held on to that, went undefeated. If that's how it works out for Ohio State fans, I think they're going to be just fine with that. How, however, however, Jeremiah Smith is, what, what does Prime say? Box office. Box office. You want to see that man play. You are going to line the streets to see that man play. Once you have seen the highlights, you will understand how a true freshman is running at the one for Ohio State at a receiver room that has become renowned over the past five years for just pumping out first-round picks and Heisman finalists. He has ascended to the top of that depth chart, and it is deep. Like, you can go from J.J. Smith to Mega Buka to Carnell Tate to Brandon Ennis to Mylon Graham. You can keep going because they got it like that. They are stacking five stars. You saw what Marvin Harrison Jr. became. You saw what Jackson Smith and Jigba became. You saw what Chris Olave became. You saw what Garrett Wilson became. And Jeremiah Smith might be the most talented wide receiver to ever step foot on campus at Ohio State. Oh, yeah, defensively. They went into the portal, and they got out the best defender available. One Caleb Downs, who, like Arch Manning, is going to provide so much fodder for us in 2025 because they will both be draft eligible. That dude is different. He started as a true freshman, too, in Nick Saban's backfield, where he played safety and had 107 tackles. That is a freshman record going back to 1970 at Alabama. They got dudes all over the field. For them, again, are you going to take care of business in front of the teams that we think you should beat? And there is nobody on their schedule right now that we do not believe Ohio State should beat. Okay? You should beat everybody else on that schedule. There is nobody there from Michigan on down, from Penn State on down, or Oregon on down. Oregon fans trying to act brand new because they want to act like we didn't watch them get bullied by the whole state of Idaho. And because they want a rivalry game back to we hate you more than we like ourselves, we're supposed to act like y'all somebody. Nah, man, you made us look bad. We ranked y'all in the spot where I got, where I got Tennessee right now, where they got Alabama right now. And what'd y'all do? Damn near lose to the Vandals. Damn near got vandalized at home. And then you let Boise State coming over from the Mountain West to be what is going to be the zombie Pac-12 also bully you with a running back that went for 192. Hey, RJ, Ashton Gentry is the best tailback in all of college football. And? And? What's your defense? Chop liver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you face the number one running back in all of college football, you're going to give up 192 on the ground? What do you expect is going to happen when you see Quinshawn Junkins and Travion Henderson in that offensive line? I would like to know. I, I, I'm, I'm very curious. And that's before I start talking about what they can do offensively. Nah, you still got some things that you got to work out for me. So you're Ohio State, and you're going, all right, something got to give. But you know what? You know what? If this is how y'all really feel, we're just going to have to go out there and take it. Next program we really got to talk about is Georgia. All right, like, I'm looking at this. We have given Kirby Smart exactly what Kirby Smart wanted. I didn't do it, but they did it. I still got Georgia's number one team in the country because until somebody beats them, that's just what it is. I am agnostic, not religious at all, about who the number one team is in the country in September as long as the order completes some version of Ohio State, Texas, and Georgia. 
I got Georgia at one. I got Texas at two. I got Ohio State at three. You could flip them. I wouldn't care. Because right now, those feel like three locks. One of those teams is going to be a five seed. Two of those teams is going to get a bye. And Lord help you if you are if you're in the 12th spot. Do you realize that right now that if the AP results were the playoff bracket, Georgia would host Northern Illinois? What did Northern Illinois do to deserve that kind of beatdown? What did they deserve to be embarrassed about like this at Sanford? They didn't. All they did was beat Notre Dame, and you're going to give them the privilege of getting stomped out by a Georgia team that is just pissed off and mad now. Because did they get caught out by Kentucky? Absolutely they did. Did they play crappily against Kentucky? Absolutely they did. But that's just what they do when they go to Kentucky. You know, like, they go to Kentucky in 2020, and they win 14-3. to They go to Kentucky in 2022, and they win 16-6. to Never mind that Georgia has won 41 consecutive regular season games. Nope. The one time we see them get drug into the deep water by a Kentucky team we don't think is any good, we docked them to number two. And now Kirby Smart's going, cool, give me all, give me, give me this, and I'm sticking it to the bulletin board everywhere we go. This is what they think of you. They are not showing you the least amount of respect. You don't get to make any mistakes. You don't get to have an off night. They think that y'all suck. That's what he's going to say. Do we think they suck? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Being number two means we would expect you to play in the national championship. But that's not what Kirby Smart's going to say. He's going to say, we didn't have Tate Ratledge. We were down on our defensive line without bodies that we would normally have. And we won a football game on the road in the SEC. And what did they do to us? They disrespect the hell out of us. That's what they did. Hey, Carson Beck, they said that you're not no good. They said that you are nothing. Without that Georgia defense. Georgia defense. They said y'all not no good without nobody else that can help you with this depth. Remember the scheme is supposed to be rotating in all these five stars that they got? Apparently, when y'all ain't got everybody, y'all just not that good. You're not the number one team in the country. Never mind you won 41 straight. Never mind that the only team to beat you last year was one play away from perhaps playing in the national championship game and got maybe the Heisman winner in Jalen Milrow this year if he can get past Georgia, but that's nothing else entirely. Never mind that we can run the ball anytime we want on most programs or that Oscar Delp is actually showing up to be a dude or that Carson Beck might be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. It's possible. Don't think it's going to happen, but it's possible. What they are going to say is that you suck. That's how being read as number two in the country is going to read to Georgia fans, and I guarantee you that's how it's going to read to the Georgia football team. And on top of that, we have been, and I have been, talking about how 25 of y'all getting arrested for driving-related charges. I also read a story. I don't know if this part I got to be careful about, but the way in which they are tracking these is interesting in Athens, Clark. Because you doing 106 in, in, in a 65, that's just not, nobody's going to let that one go, my guy. That, that's not going to happen. Especially after Devin Willock and Chandler LaCroix died, because they was racing down them streets, okay? They are looking and going, you're undisciplined. They are looking and going, you didn't care about Kentucky. They are looking and going, you expected us to just continue to let you be the number one team in the country. And no, we are turning the screws to Georgia. That's what he's going to say. He is going to use this the way that Nick Saban used to use it when they didn't play somebody tough. He is going to use it to absolutely wear them out. And he's going to make them so mad and so angry that they're going to be taking it out on everybody else they play in the SEC. That's just how that's going to go. It's going to be major pain over there. He is going to turn himself into major Benson, Winifred, pain. I mean, it's about to get medieval over there in Georgia. Practice is not going to be fun. Pra practice is going to be hellacious. And you know what? Good. Good. I didn't give Georgia that bulletin board material. I'm not ready to do that yet. I would like to see Texas beat somebody other than Michigan, and I would like to see Ohio State beat somebody other than directional Michigan, and then we can have this conversation. But again, it is September 15th. September 15th. We have played three weeks of college football, okay? We got a ways to go on this. I still think that 
They should not have been in a dog fight with Kentucky. They escaped UK, call it Brexit. But did they win? Yes. And that's the thing that I, I really got to fight with most college football fans about. It's if you're the AP, the argument that you're making is it's not enough to be undefeated because it's never been enough to be undefeated. You have to beat people going away. You have to give everybody the same whooping. If you look at Ole Miss, did they play Furman? Yes, they scored 76. <laughs> did they play Middle Tennessee? Yes, they scored 52. Did they play White Forts? Yes, they won 40 to 6. They are leaving no sign that they are doing anything other than running right through people the way they should be. Same thing with Tennessee. They dropped 71 on Kent State. Okay? They dropped 69 on Chattanooga. Hey, RJ, these ain't no teams. And they are treating them that way. That's what you wanted to see. You wanted to see a Kentucky team that got beat by, like a drum by South Carolina get beat like a drum by Georgia. They didn't do that. Never mind South Carolina was up 17-0 against LSU. Should have won that damn game if Lenore Sellers doesn't get hurt. We have this to deal with. This is going to be a sticking point. This is going to be a thing that Kirby Smart is going to just beat and beat and beat and beat. And Georgia fans are going, thank God the AP has given us the manna that we asked for. Just dropped it down from the sky because now we can get discipline back. Now we can get back to running the football and sitting on people. Now we can get back to I don't want them to gain another yard. Oh, man. All right. Well, thank you for that Associated Press poll.